Good evening to you, televiewers. Welcome to the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. In our top stories, schools will effectively resume across Anglophone Cameroon come September 2nd, 2019. And parents in Tiko subdivision will effectively or massively send their children to school. These are words of the Divisional Officer for Tiko Subdivision in the Southwest region of Cameroon and Nwafor Kletusa Songwe believes that with or without the armed conflicts, the population of parents will brave the odds and send their children to school massively come September 2nd, 2019. And equally, the rising insecurity rates in Betua in the East region of Cameroon uh, because the uh, caused the governor of the region to place a curfew on the entire region as a result of rising insecurity that have left to many homes uh, burgled and equally harassment on the population in broad daylight and equally at night the population have been uh, crying for security uh, measures to be put in place to ensure that peace and tranquility returns in the entire East region of the country. Details and more in this edition of the newscast. Good evening to you once more, televiewers. Thanks for joining us in this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. Schools will effectively begin come September 2nd, 2019, in Tiko Subdivision, southwest region of the country, and parents will massively send their children to school. This was the this were the words of the divisional officer Cletus Asongwe, who was speaking recently to his population, and he equally believes that with the conflicts or without it, schools will effectively resume when it is September 2nd for the next academic year. Details with our Southwest Regional Correspondent, Derek Jato. Mr. Amwafo Kleto Sasungwe, the Divisional Officer for Tiko Subdivision, has unveiled a holiday sporting activity for unity in his subdivision. It is a competition like none that has ever been seen here. A competition that will bring together teams from the various villages. The bike riders will be constituting a team. The taxi men will have a team. The military, the police officers, the, the customs. It is a unity tournament. Speaking at a peace meeting, which took place at the Tiko Council Conference Hall, the Divisional Officer for Tiko Subdivision says he knows his people and that they will not disappoint him nor puncture the government strives for effective school resumption in his subdivision. His children will be going back to school at any time from now. I know that I can always count on the population of Tiko who have always been peace-loving, who, who know the value of education and who have always sent their children to school. I'm confident that come uh, September 2nd, all, the, all roads will be leading to the schools. And to other religious stakeholders, going to school for knowledge is ordained by God. Our whole program is a knowledge be composed. Knowledge for five knowledge be composed for, for human beings. And today some pundit holds that Tiko subdivision is one of the few subdivisions where schools have been operational though not effective since the outbreak of the anglophone crisis talk about uh, reports that says reverend father peter falling of uh, the kumbo diocese in the northwest region has been released by his abductors he was picked up by armed men in bamenda early this week uh, to an unknown destination and the circumstances under his abduction remain uh, unclear the kidnapping of men of god especially those of the Kali church has been uh, recurrent and common in the restive northwest region of cameroon I see you talking about uh, kidnappings. Uh, reports say the mother and sister of Chris Anu, a leader of the separatist movement, have been abducted this Friday afternoon in Yaoundé. Who kidnapped uh, them and why remains the unanswered question. 
And now, rising insecurity in Betwa in uh, the East region of uh, Cameroon for two weeks now has invoked a curfew in this part of uh, Cameroon. This follows a decision signed by the East Governor, Grégoire Mvongo. He states that the situation follows rising insecurity in the region with uh, acts of killings committed in broad daylight and at night. Armed persons uh, burgled into homes at uh, night and equally harassing commercial motorbike riders in broad day light uh, on employment and uh, prolonged power outstage, the victimized population say have favored the rising rates of insecurity. We revisit the uh, insecurity rates in Betwa, chief town of the uh, east region of Cameroon, in the following report. For three weeks now, the town of Betwa in the east region of Cameroon has not known peace due to prevailing insecurity. The towns are Homes are burglarized every night by burglars. Even during the day on the streets, theft is common and more dangerous. Aggression, others note, is alarming. Commercial motorbike riders are principal victims of aggressions during the day. They are threatened with guns and other deadly weapons and money extorted from them. Bike riders have reported the rising phenomenon to administrative authorities, which saw the governor convened a meeting to discuss the issue. City dwellers say the insecurity is favored by youth unemployment, constant and prolonged power outage. Tout cela constitue un ensemble d'éléments qui favorise malheureusement cette insécurité. Faced with this situation, the East Governor Grégoire Mvogo has held meetings with motorbike trade unionists. Il faut automatiquement relancer the trade unionists demand reinforcement of security in the motorbike sector and ensuring identification of bike riders so as to flush out invaders. Civil society actors suggest vigilance, self-discipline and denunciation of criminals in a bid to curb this insecurity in the town of Betwa before security elements effectively do the rest. À se protéger parce que l'État ne peut pas mettre derrière chaque Camerounais un policier, un gendarme pour le garder. For effective eradication of the phenomenon, commercial motorbike riders and the population are expected to double this vigilance and discipline. And remarks made by the Ministry or the Minister of Public Health uh, indicates that uh, as compared to other regions, the South region tops the prevalence rate of hepatitis statistics situates the South region with 10.5% uh, of hepatitis B patients against 8.3% uh, of the National Triangle. These remarks were made by the Minister of Public Health uh, while uh, launching the ninth edition of the National Crusades against uh, Hepatitis in Ebolova, south region of Cameroon, Hemini Luga reports. Updates from the Ministry of Public Health state that as compared to other regions, the south region has a high rate of hepatitis B patients. Hepatitis B in the south region stands at 10.5%, higher than the national prevalence rate, and it is serious. The remark was made in course of the launching of activities marking the ninth edition of the 2019 National Crusade Against Hepatitis by the Minister of Public Health, Manaudo Malashi. The South region's top position, as remarked by the Minister, remains worrying, especially with regards to the fact that measures are said to have been taken by the Ministry to curb the spread of hepatitis and to preserve the health status of Cameroonians. 
accompagné par ses partenaires techniques et financiers. The Ministry of Public Health and its partners increased services rendered to curb hepatitis, the treatment, the affordable cost of drugs, amongst other benefits. Launched under the theme Investing for the Elimination of Hepatitis, locals benefited of free screening, an initiative which they applauded. It is important to know your status because it is better to know. For safety, I came for the screening. You know, hepatitis provokes death. It's worth noting that the national vaccination program in Cameroon is embraced by over 32,000 health centers, which gives room for screening with children inclusive. When we administer vaccine to babies, the rate of hepatitis reduces. The children administered the vaccine at the age of six weeks. Hepatitis remains a killer disease if not detected on time, and its means of transmission do vary. To prevent, we need to even know how it is contracted. It could be via blood transfusion, via sharp objects, and the highest means is via sexual acts. Having as target to eradicate the spread of hepatitis by 2030, the Ministry of Public Health reiterates prevention stands the best solution. And the fight against uh, exploitation of mangrove in Tiko subdivision in the southwest region of Cameroon might not be won because the exploiters are coming from a dweller in the Little World region at night to carry out the illegal business. And Chief uh, Mokundo Daniel was speaking to the southwest regional delegates of the environment, Derijato Hasmo. <laughs> They know that their activities here at the Tiko beach are illegal. That we don't have to harvest mangrove. Because of the present condition that I earlier told you, we just harvest this because we don't have nothing to do. Mangroves around here have all been cut down. And today these exploiters are now going far into the creeks for the wood. And we saw another boat under construction for the same venture. Mr. Saint Ekwadi Songe, the South West Regional Delegate of Environment and Nature Protection, is also at this Tiko Beach to see things for himself. If the UA they are exporting it, they are not doing it in a sustainable way. Okay. Chief Mokondo Daniel Ngande, mayor of Tiko Council, is lamenting that his municipality has been infiltrated by mangrove exploiters sneaking in from Douala, and they do so most often at night. Yeah, you see the problem is uh, we always have um, uh, people who come from uh, the littoral side of uh, our country with big boots, big torch lights and walk throughout the whole night and you see the challenge of leaving the Tiko to go into the creeks in the night to apprehend them is quite a constraint. Population exposure too is contributing to the disappearance of mangroves here, thereby preparing this area for a natural disaster. The mangrove forests are there and like the defense mechanism without the mangrove. We risk suffering what other countries are suffering, like the tsunamis that we hear occur here and there. The reason why the Southwest Regional Delegation of Environment has engaged a counter program, especially with some councils in the region. We are going to continue to censor them in such a way that they are going to know that not only caught, but after cutting, they have to plant, they have to regenerate this uh, fragile ecosystem. We now talk something else. We are coming back uh, in Douala, the economic capital of uh, Cameroon, where works have begun on the wide stretch of roads in Bonaberry, Douala Falls subdivision, uh, which has been at the center of inundation during uh, heavy rainfalls. However, the scar left by the inundation is still very visible on the population. For me, I'm Tom Sander, reports.
In the report, uh, Hamfomi Amtron Sanda, who is telling us that uh, construction works have begun on the right stretch of roads in Bonaberry Dwala 4 subdivision, which has been at the center of inundation. However, the scars caused by the inundation could still be visible on the population. Details with Fomi Amtron Sanda. Well, who will be bringing this report in a subsequent edition of uh, the newscast. Up next is Talking Point. Good evening to you once more. Welcome to the second segment of this newscast. It is Talking Point and we are having as guests Longla Blashes. Good evening. Good evening, Innocent. You are a political analyst. And welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The pleasure is all mine. And uh, I would like us to uh, begin by looking at uh, the campaign for back to school in the northwest and southwest regions of uh, Cameroon, hit by an armed conflict. How is it possible to you that the campaign or the cause for school resumption by government will be effective come September 2nd, 2019, mm -hmm. regarding the situation? Uh, to go straight to the point, the campaign will never be effective because the government, the way they are campaigning for the back to school is not something new. It happens in 2017, it happens in 2018, and it's about happening in 2019. What I pray and I want the government to even launch as campaign should be what we call campaign for ceasefire. That's what I always say because uh, we cannot be campaigning that children should go back to school. Why the military, they are still loitering around, loitering around our streets in the northwest and southwest. These things is something that we cannot and accept that children should go back to school. I myself, uh, Mr. Innocent, I am for among those that are praying that children, our children to go back to school because it is their right. Yes. It is their right. What they have the right to go back to school. But first and foremost, we need to think of their security. We need to think of the children's security. Are they secure if they go back to school? Are they secure if they sit in class? We have seen buildings, school buildings, which have been destroyed by uh, cartridges that have been destroyed by by guns and whatsoever, by the military. Because I'm saying the military because uh, I have been one of those that have been in the field or how what some people call now ground zero that these things happen i've seen a situation where when the amber say okay we want to impose ghost town one the, the, that's one amber will just pass around and shot or just fire one cartridge on the air and you will see the military coming out mm -hmm. they will just spread cartridges randomly are randomly because they know that they are not the one buying them. They know that it's taxpayer money. They know everything that they are using is taxpayer money. So you will not see the amber shooting anyhow. And at the end, when they are shooting anyhow, or the confrontation between the ambers, that's the ambers fighters and the military, you will discover that the innocent ones who, are, who have even struggled to go and hide their heads in the bush, they receive a, a, a loose bullet. Mm -hmm, a and bullet. that's why we are seeing situations where there are some people now in the the bushes that they, that they have lost their life and their family cannot even trace them out we have seen a situation where people have even got uh, 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 that they have discovered a lot of corpses in the bushes because the military when they are spreading their cartridge they don't know that the cartridge because they are cartridges that can take uh, about a kilometer when you're here shooting a, shooting a gun or firing gun some, uh, somewhere you don't know what is happening in the bush or what is happening behind a house or inside a house. That's what is happening. So now we are saying that if the government, as they are preaching, or because one of their governors is in the northwest now moving, moving around, going ups and down and preaching. Like, the like you saw school, like, the uh, situation in Bengui. Was in Bengui. was even attacked, yet he went ahead and said, parents should send their children to school. Come Actually, September. and that's what we are saying, that instead of the government to preach back to school, we should preach or campaign for ceasefire. If there is ceasefire, if the children sit in their home or their parents watch and see that, Two, one, two, three days. There are no military uniform lurching around the street. One, two, three days. There are no ambas lurching around the street. You, it will give a conducive environment for our parents or for our children to go back to school so that they can have a cool head. I cannot stand and say 
parents will send their children back to school while militaries and amber are still lodging around us. So you are calling for demilitarization, whereas the government is saying the military is there working professionally to uh, secure the children, to accompany the children go to school heat free because they believe that the, uh, they have an enemy hiding in the bush, the Amba boys who are against uh, school resumption. But today we are seeing uh, leaders of the separatist movement campaigning for back to school. So are you calling for demilitarization when the government wants the, a complete secured environment for school resumption? I'm calling for demilitarization and uh, Mr. Innocent, you have just used a word that military doing professional. What kind of profession, uh, professionalism are the military doing? I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm just uh, quoting the words used by government officials. By government officials, the military you know, is professional in the field. We have, a gov that. we have a government who are adamant to change. We have a government who can do everything. They don't care about human beings. They don't care about human, uh, 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 how, how, how their people in the field, how their people they treat their lives. That we have a government officials where if they kill, that's where they smile and that's where they rejoice. If they see that hundreds of souls has lost, or oh, hundreds of souls, or oh, so uh, uh, thousands of them have died in the northwest and southwest, that's where they rejoice and that's where they carry their wines and drink. So when you are talking of government officials saying that uh, military are doing their professionalism or professional work in the northwest and southwest, I'll say no. Professional work how? We are seeing military breaking into people's homes, stealing money, stealing property. We are seeing military shooting directly on somebody or on uh, on innocent citizens we are seeing military that's burning houses burning schools and so on is that is that what we call professionalism is that what we call professional work that the military are doing what the military are doing in the northwest and south is what we call is what i in particular i call stealing killing and destruction and that is what uh, 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 i always say that when the French men or the French people came into this union, you know, they, they are coming or they came to steal, kill, and destroy. And that is exactly what is happening in the Northwest and Southwest. And the government has, has refuted all those allegations that you are directing towards the military. Uh, it is it is quite it is quite clear that uh, I don't I don't even I, I don't even agree with any government official to come out on the screen and say uh, the military are not doing their work well the military are doing this or that because that is what they have bargained in that is what they have like uh, 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 uh. That they have tied themselves to see that they should be killing and when they are killing their 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 their, their incomes their income increase because you cannot see a situation where people are dying every day innocent in the northwest and southwest statistics shows that each passing day at least 10 people at least 10 persons go down so if if the kind of statistics is showing and people are seeing everything clear and you as a, as a government official you still come on the screen and say everything is moving well everything is under control and so on and so forth then it baffled me i pray that the military should uh, withdraw from or the, that's the president of the republic should withdraw his military from the northwest and southwest and give peace a chance we should give peace a chance the ambas uh, 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 leaders they are in the diaspora and they have declared they want children to go back to school everybody wants children to go back to school but how can we allow our children to go back to school in this stage or in this kind of condition on that's when, when there is insecurity everywhere but we we have countries uh, of the world where uh, the, the, there's actually war where, but schools are continuing the children are accompanied to school why is the case of cameroon different uh mr innocent i would like to say this categorical clear to everyone that if you're a father or you're a mother or whosoever that you have your children to send them to school in the northwest and southwest and if you send your children to school in the northwest and southwest why the military and the uh, uh, ambas are loitering around the street it means you don't love your child if you are a child that your parents say go back to school and you discover that there are militaries and amber loitering around the street and you still continue going back to that school it means you don't love yourself so i, I i'm saying again and again that the armies they should go back to their barrack before before 2016 school was going on history mm -hmm. 
school was going on his street. Was there military there? There was no military lodging around the street. There was no gendarme lodging around the street. We have a normal police. Who are the normal? They are the normal security that we want. We are not saying that they should send all police, army, gendarme to the barrack. No, police are there for the security of the people. Why the military? Military supposed to go back where oh to even they, they are there to guard our borders, to guard that to fight for the uh, 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 I can say inter inter. In, uh, that's war, serious war. We, we can talk of war. That's a country fighting a country. So that is what the military is supposed to do. I don't see the military going back to a street to kill innocent citizens. We have the normal police in the street. Let the government withdraw the military and the Ajandang send them to their offices, send the military to their barrack, allow the police. The police is there to keep the peace or to secure the people and bring peace and fight for insecurity. We have... Uh over 600,000 children in the northern and southwest regions who have been uh, deprived from the right from going to school. We have some of them who are schooling in other French-speaking regions. Is there a particular or are there some uh, consequences of this uh, deprivation of children from going to school? We have those, especially those who do not have the opportunity, those who are in bushes, those who are even in uh, Nigeria, in terms of Nigeria, are living under deplorable conditions, no uh, social facility, especially education. Yeah, Mr. Innocent, there are a lot of consequences. How would their life be tomorrow? There are a lot of consequences, and I will try to na narrate some of them here. Uh, we are fighting, I can say we because we are the Anglophones. I'm one of the Anglophones that are fighting that things should go on or things should come to the, to, 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 to the highest stage where everyone practice uh, 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 equality. That's in Cameroon. Equality in the sense that if a Francophone is put at this level, they, mm -hmm. an Anglophone should put at the same level. And again, I am still among those that are saying, if things are not going on well in Cameroon presently, and those who are saying that Cameroon should divide, I am also praying that Cameroon should divide, if things still maintain the way it is. Why? Because we are being classified as second class citizen in Cameroon. That's the Anglophones. And, and that's not even second class citizen, but as slaves to the Francophones. Now, if the Ambas that's the leaders of the Ambazonia in the diaspora. We, they are fighting that uh, uh, they should divide and um, Ambazonia should be a country on its own. If Ambazonia is a country on its own, will Ambazonia be ruled by uh, 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 that's uneducated mm -hmm. people, uh, illiterate people? No. Ambazonia have to be ruled by people who are well-educated, literate people, people who can bring things, who can create things, technologies and so on. So, we pray that children should go back to school. They should go back to school so that, because it, it, it is a normal say that children are the leader of tomorrow, mm -hmm. and you can never be a leader of a leader of tomorrow while you are uneducated, while you are not edu educated. So we should allow and give peace a chance for our children to go back to school so that tomorrow the future should be bright. Tomorrow the country will develop. Development can only take place when there are educated well educated mm -hmm. well -literate and well literate people. people in the society so please we should give peace a chance and allow our children to go back to school allow our children to go back to school in the conducive environment let the military government should campaign on ceasefire the military should go back to the barrack amber should maintain or they should go back to their homes turn because they are most of these amber fighters who are uh, students most of them are students. They should go back to their homes. They should go and warm their bed. Yeah, they should go and warm their bed and at least enjoy their homes and so on and have that peace in their heart to go back to school. Let's now equally look at, before we wrap up, let's look at uh, the situation of some of the uh, Anglophone detainees in Kuneg, especially Mancho, BBC, T. Conrad, Penn Terence, and Felix Ngalim, and many others, 177 others who were extracted from the Kuneg prison and taken to unknown destination. Rumors circulated on social media that they were killed. But uh, later, it was uh, Red Dark, the network uh, of uh, defenders of human rights in Central Africa, who said they are fine, they are doing okay, but they have uh, suffered physically and equally moral torture. And after that, the Minister of Communication uh, tweeted that uh, all of them are okay, they are fine, they are doing very fine, and uh, equally uh, that nothing happens to them. But <laughs> we have read that, that held the press conference and said that they were severely tortured, and even Manchu BBC was taken back to uh, Kundengi. 
to you, how can you describe such a situation where the, the Redan is calling on the, uh, the Justice Minister to resign and his collaborators over the uh, Kondengi riot? In a developed country, uh, Mr. Innocent, that is what was supposed to have been done since by the minister, for the minister to resign automatically. What happened in Kondengi, I classify it into two factors. One, that's the social factors and the political factors. The social factors in the sense that the living condition of the prisoner was not that good. A prison where you're supposed to have about a thousands of prisoners in there, but we are having today about 4,000 or 5,000 more and more. A prison where you, a, a prisoners where you're supposed to allow their family or them to receive their family. There are no ways that uh, the uh, uh, warders allow the families of the prisoners to come and visit them and even talk with them so that they can. If you are a prisoner, it doesn't mean that your life has end. Some of our ministers today was prisoner yesterday. Mm -hmm. Some of our ministers today was prisoner yesterday. And if that was the same condition that happens with them, I don't think they could have been alive up to date to be in the position where they are. So they should always at least please. Take care of prisoner. As a prisoner, it doesn't mean that you're the worst person on earth. No, it is because you have made a mistake and they want to correct the mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's one. That's what I call the social con the social uh, aspect of it. Okay, we come now to a political aspect. The political aspect in the sense that there are some crim uh, there are some prisoners in the prisons who the government know that they are like a uh, 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 stone in their uh, uh, in their struggle for peace to come to, 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 to for peace to reign in Cameroon. There are some people like, you see, the Mancho BBCs, because you see Mancho BBC will come out with, like, they communicate that no children should go back to, to school, school and so on and so forth. They are and pressure on them in that prison. So, the uh, government officials, they are looking for means, either one, to eliminate some of them. Two, to, to like, torture them in the sense that they, when they say, do this, they have to do it without hesitation. So, that is why when they create... They, Look, the government official was the one that made these things to happen the way it happens. Make the reality to happen and what happened in Kondigi because they have their reason. That is why I say political, uh, political aspect of it. They have their reason and their reason, they have already succeeded in it. Taking some of these prisoners to wherever God, wherever they, uh, it's only them that know and, uh, and God, wherever <laughs> they are taking them, this is, this who solution. knows what they have said to them and who knows what they have done to them. I think torture could be the Torture solution. could be Torture is one of those things that to make them know that as we are doing this to you, as you are going back to that place, anything we say, accept it. If you don't accept, you will die. So they take them to a place where they know that the cameras or eyes will not be focused on them and impose their evil acts in, into their mind so that in any time they can control them as a remote control. That is not how it's supposed to be. They, they, we will discover now that the government officials, they are saying, yeah, they are fine. They are uh, uh, the prisoners, they are fine. Why did they remove them from that place? And why did they remove move only some certain number of prisoners and not all. So they have their reason and they know that when they take this certain number of prisoners to this kind of place and they will impose what they're supposed to impose on them, when they will come back, anything they will say, they have to do it. And so, yeah, certainly, maybe you're accepting the fact uh, that uh, that calls for the resignation that they should resign. That is why I so said in a developed country, the minister could have resigned that same day. <laughs> so okay. I'm saying that it's not still late for the minister to resign because what happened is on call for. What's happened in the uh, Boya and Yaoundé is something that is not, oh, we don't pray that it should ever and ever happen again. Okay. It has never happened. Okay. And why is, is it that it happens okay. now? So the minister should resign with an immediate effect. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, uh, Longla Blasius, for thank, coming. Thank you, Innocent Aze. And I recall that uh, that was uh, Longla Blasius, of course, a political analyst who was part of this uh, second segment of the newscast, Talking Points. Thanks so much for equally being there. We shall be back, uh, certainly, next week. God willing, do I <laughs>